got an XC jump from college. I had two very productive days on Wednesday and today, Friday. Because I really needed to tidy up certain things. So I tidied up all like my knitting and yarn stuff on Wednesday in the bedroom where I do my video in. Um, and I did a tremendous job. I mean, I still need to go focus a bit more on the desk because um, it's still a bit messy but not as messy as it was so I need to just tidy stuff away there wipe it down and then I'll be done until next time <laughs> this is, everything comes up slowly doesn't it and for ages I've needed to do my bedside drawers anyway I tidied all that out because I was actually looking for something I thought I lost, which means I thought I lost it. I did lose it, I still found it. And I thought, well, it could be there, but it might not be, who knows. I thought if anywhere it's gonna be with all my knitting stuff. I couldn't find it anywhere among anything. And I think it's slipped down behind the sofa. But that sofa is has two of the seats, the outside seats has recliners. I've had that sofa out quite far. I've had the recliners open. I've really felt down the back as far as I can go. I've looked underneath from the back and from the front using a torch. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Short of lifting it up, trying to tip it on its side or something, which might move things, if, if indeed they're in there somewhere. I can't, I don't know where it is. I've looked high and low for it. I mean, it's not really... Uh, something that's necessary but if somebody were to come across it who didn't know where it was they'd be like what on earth is that for what's it from it's a beautiful day today 16.5 degrees C um, I don't know what that is in F uh, it looks really bright and sunny and lovely and I was indoors today <laughs> I know but I needed to do it I couldn't just leave it any longer I'll tell you what my iPod touch is crazy when they're charging, they go crazy. I have like iMessage, so I can iMessage my mum. It created a couple of iMessages with random, dig two random digits. Of course it wouldn't send, and it's also trying to send it to my mum at the same time. And it, it failed the whole message because some of the contacts were unrecognisable, which of course it was. It's like somebody just, it's like the cat had walked across the keyboard, that kind of thing. Um, and the message inside was all gobbledygook as well, apart from one word which said Vatican. Um, there was another message, an iMessage, which went, was tried to be said to gobbledygook place. And it attached a photo. Of course it failed. Other times it's turned on and started playing music. Now I've got very little music on there. And last night it tried to, um, it was playing something by Mankato. She was did I download on there? So she was talking. It was frightened the crap out of David again. Frightened the crap out of me. And I couldn't apologise enough. He went, it's alright. I mean, actually, see, he's actually really good about it. Unusually. Normally he goes mad. <laughs> but no, he was, he was fine. So, at least it wasn't like blaring music or anything like that. But I've seen it, I've found it open on web pages. I haven't been to. Well, you know what I mean? It's, it's like there's a ghost in it. It's really weird behaviour. I don't know why it does it. I mean, it makes no difference if I close all the apps. Um, really cancel them all off from the, uh, the app drawer at the bottom. Um, that makes no difference. It makes no difference if I take it off Wi-Fi, no, put it on airplane mode. Makes no difference there. It still does crazy things. <sighs> Sorry, that sigh sounds really bad. I'm just like, end of the day, feeling accomplished sigh, that kind of thing. And I've got some more yarn. It's Sarah's fault. Look, Sarah, you know who you are. <laughs> No, actually, she does us a favour. And 
was always already talking about it on um, 24 Carat Crochet. So, but for me, what, what was especially useful was that there's something I want to make, and the yarn used in the pattern is current Simply Soft, two skeins. It's one colour, I, I can't see how I can make it into two separate colours because I don't know how it's constructed yet. Um, and of course, when I bought a shipment from Yarn Inspirations, I got single colours of everything. So I thought, well, just use, and I couldn't even use a red heart because it wasn't enough. So again, single colours. Um, I thought, well, use two. When I realised the thickness of, remember the thickness of Karen Simply Soft is quite thin compared to, say, Red Heart, Super Saver. I thought, well, I'll just use two, if it's two anyway, um, or three balls of DK. Big helicopter up there. But, mostly I've got singles. And where I have got doubles, the yarn is very thin. It's way thinner than the Simply Soft. So that's not going to do it either. So, oh, crying out loud. But when Sarah said, I know I'm going to get into trouble here, but <laughs> actually, she was brilliant. So I thought, yeah, what I'll do, I'll decide which colour I want. But then I couldn't decide, could I? So I'll pick three what I'm likely to make it from. And I ordered again, singles of each one. And now I know the dialogues are different, but when I look at them side by side, they look the same. But what I decided to do, rather than like, work with one skin and then start on another skin and then suddenly see a vastly different colour because of the dialogue, to go, ah, that looks awful. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do like, a few rows in one skin, a few rows in another, and spread it out like that way throughout the project so it'll look like it's, it's just natural shading, big difference in shade. So that's what I'm going to do when I get to do it. But yeah, I was talking, about, talking to myself about my yarn stash. Thinking, I've got too much of stuff that I haven't even got any plans for. But I don't want to keep buying yarns in. Oh, I'm going to make this project next. What yarn have I got? Oh, I haven't got that. that. That's the problem. I go, I realise I haven't got enough yarn of one particular type, and I'm like, oh, I have to buy more yarn, which I don't mind because I love, love buying yarn, but it's not an ideal thing when your space compromised. So that's why I thought the, the Addy would come in, and it hasn't really. I just, well, I haven't actually. Um, well, it's not, it's, I think it's motivating myself to do stuff from there. No, it's nothing wrong with the Addy. It's just that sometimes I have a desire to do something else. That's all it is. Um, because at the moment I really, really want to crochet. And I only tend to knit at the knitting group and I don't want to knit at home. I don't want to knit. But yeah, I want to learn how to make socks. Which are knitting. I mean, I know you can crochet socks. But, I mean, like proper socks. Like, the socks I made on the Addy were an hour away, so that's, that's quite thick. So they're not socks you can wear inside your shoes, either. So I have got some oh, sock yarn again, courtesy of Sarah, because she mentioned Drops of Fable, which is sock yarn, because I, I mentioned you don't really get plain sock yarn, do you? So she said, yeah, I need two, two balls of each. No, two balls, whatever I get. So I've got a plain, like, I like a light blue. And I actually got like two of them. And two of a like um, it is a colour thing, but it's not it's not variegated, it's a I forgot what the word was. But it looks like there's a, a colour effect on it, if you know what I mean. Oh no, I don't know what I mean. I'd have to point you to the link. But you can see it's totally different from a variegated yarn. Yeah. to try and make socks on needles and I think that's the only thing I am going to do at home. I don't want to take that to the knitting room. And then of course when I saw Barry's video about those nine inch needles I'm intrigued. But of course I want to do top socks which means I've got to start. Have I? 
Yes, I've got to start with Magic Loop, I think. Yeah. So, even if I start with that, and then once I get to a certain point, I can then introduce, say, because I want, I want to do Magic Loop. I don't have any DPNs. I don't like the thought of DPNs. Um, one of the reasons is I'm scared it'll just slide out the work. And then it's all those stitches suddenly laddering down on me, but ah, I can't keep them. Don't want that. And there is another reason, and it's to do with time to buy more needles. I don't mind buying a pair of knitting needles in whatever size, except until it's found discovered interchangeables. Now that's just a dream. You can have whatever size you want because of the cord, and put whatever tips you need on because so that it can be the size whatever project and I love the idea, the concept of, you know, um, interchangeables. They're just brilliant. Well, DPNs, is it four or five needles I get per size? How many needles am I going to have? You know what I mean? If I, oh, well, I've got some like wor worsted weight yarn, so I need fives or 5.5 millimetre. Um, DK, I need four. But then for DPNs, you're doing socks, aren't you? So, sizes, whatever it recommends on the ball band, but then of course you go and do a tension square and you won't know until you do your tension as to what actually size you need. And it's just the thought of all the possible needles. I know the interchangeable set I've got pretty much a full set. Uh, not many of the biggest. I mean, what, what's the biggest knitting needle I've got? I know I've got a six mil. Possibly got a six and a half, seven... I don't know if I've got an eight, and I don't know about the nine either, I'm not sure, I'll have to look. But it's very unlikely I'll be using those sizes. Maybe occasionally, once in a while, I don't know. But yeah, I've also got some chunky yarn, and I did I did post on Loomaholics. What could you make on a loom with? Oh yeah, um, 200 metres, or 200 grams, so 200 metres. Of chunky, and people recommended like a 10 stitch blanket. I can't say we can get a blanket after that. It's something I got from Pound Stretcher. I've got three different colours. Oh, I should have gone left. I might just go left. Friday is dreadful data for traffic, and while I much prefer to go that way. I know I need to go this way. Skip it on lane, that's what the problem is. I don't really like it, but I do it because I have to. Uh, anyway, what was I saying? So you've got all these needles, little DPNs in different sizes, that storing them away, you might have to, if I don't have a case, a dedicated case for it, then it's just going to get everywhere. I'm not going to know what sizes they are unless they're actually in something that can show me it's a size, you know what I mean, a little envelope or something, or, I don't know, I just don't like the thought of the, all of the needles, so it's working with them and just the practicality of keeping them, because I don't want to dump them all in one place, or lots of different sizes in one place, because I'm thinking, oh, what size is that, oh, what size is that one, what if I'm knitting different sizes, what if I do get away with te technique-wise using it, and um, find I've got loads of different sizes. Um, not knowing which size is which, because I like to be able to put them in certain slots. I need a dedicated case that say that houses them. Say yeah, well, what's the size three, three millimeter? What's the fours? What's the five? You know, whatever. But I don't want to. I just don't want to go down DPN road. I don't like the thought of it. So I was very intrigued about the nine inch circular. Because I do have a couple of fixed circulars which are adding. Uh, one's four millimeter, uh, one's a five millimeter. And I've got two different sizes. I think I've got 30 centi 30 centimeter. 30 centimeter. Addy. I've got yeah, I can't remember the length of the addies I've got, but the hat size. Four mil, five mil. I've got two of each. One is is it 30 centimetres and 
thought he said doing this? I don't think so. But that, I don't know, the dot looks more than that. Whatever, anyway. You've heard me sound quite a lot this episode, haven't you? Episode? Episode? What do I think this is? The Cheryl Show? Because <laughs> I'm making good efforts to sort together that granny square bag. So I've almost done four strips. Four strips. Yeah, sort of four squares in a strip. So four strips of four. And then after I've done that, I have to lay it out. And I haven't sorted it together. I've somewhat crocheted it together. So then I have to actually piece those are four strips to each other in a certain way. And I have decided to line it afterwards. That's why I think I don't know. But I used variegated yarn, it was that um, magic carrot from Pamela Stretcher. Oh, well, I know what I was talking about before. Oh, hang on a minute. Wait. Um, magic carrot from Pamela Stretcher. And I realised you can't really do variegated yarn in Granny Square. You just don't. <laughs> It looks weird. Never mind. I've enjoyed doing it. That's the main thing. Okay, I remember I was talking about something before and I got... I interrupted myself by going the wrong way. Right. I was talking about chunky yarn. 200 grams. I know it's a 200 gram bob, but I don't know if it's actually 200 metres and it's chunky. And I did put a post on from Numaholics, what can I make with 200 metres of chunky? on there as a six because it actually does have um, a number anyway oops sorry there's potholes in the road um, a lot of people said um, 10 stitch blanket which is where I got the idea for the 10 stitch blanket but I'm thinking I can't imagine that being enough for a 10 stitch blanket well a blanket anyway regardless of how I constructed it I can't imagine it being enough. Right. There's nobody in those cars next to me. That's good. I'm talking to myself. Right. I parked a bit monkey, but I don't care. It's not... If they were that bothered about whether people park monkey or not, they would actually flatten this car park, tarmac it, and put lines. But there isn't. It's all like gravel. And it's horrible for manual wheelchairs. Which is now what I park on the tarmac bit if I can, if the buses aren't there. For when I'm taking CJ in the manual weight chair, but when he's in his um, power chair, I don't mind parking up here because the power chair can cope with it. So, I'm going to get my crochet out. Yeah. So, I, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, I can't imagine that. We'll make a 10 stitch blanket, a blanket out of that yarn. No matter what the construction is, I don't think it's enough. But none of the colours actually go together. At all. They look weird. So, I have to really think about what I'm going to use it for. Where did that crochet hook go? Oh, there it is. Hiding. Oops, I didn't want that. I don't need the pattern at the moment. And that's another one I want to make. That's good, isn't it? And it's in Dutch. Completely in Dutch. I printed it out in Dutch. I don't understand a word of Dutch. But I do understand that. <laughs> that's good, isn't it? That's all you need. Anyway, I'm going to go now. I want to conserve battery and I want to conserve space. No, I want to conserve battery and two to conserve space. Anyway, I'm going to go now and concentrate because otherwise I'll just go silent again and I'll waste battery and space. All right, bye bye. Yeah, I'm going. We're still going, Chris. Too much yarn. yarn of when well, it's a case of I don't know what to do with that bit. I mean I have some yarn what yarn? I have some yarn that is planned for projects. 
So that's fine. It's a case of getting on to do them projects. Again, that's fine. But then to see another you know, pattern like that, oh, yeah. But at least now I'm lining up patterns and then getting the yarn for the patterns. So that's alright. But there's yarn which I've got, which I have no intent, no intended product lined up for it. So then what I'm going to do is go through. Now I've got all the patterns in my book, uh, my folder. I'm going to go through what I intend. I've definitely got my to-do list to do. Yeah. And see if I've got any yarn for it. Well, I know where I've got yarn for it. All the projects I've got yarn for, they're going to go first in the to-do list. Um, projects where I've, I like the pattern, but I don't know whether I've got the yarn yet. Then I'm going to look at my stash and say, right, what yarn do I have for this pattern? And then I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of it. I mean, that's what you can do with scarves and hats with the addies, you know, really quickly, it's fine. Then again, it's there as well to be creative, isn't it? I'd like to know how to design stuff. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Well, like, you need like a template, don't you? I like, use this template for these sizes, like this size, this size, this size, this size, like a range of sizes. And then plonk your own pattern on it. Sorry. It. That, in theory, it works in my head, but I'm trying to find a template for something. I suppose if I look at the jacket I'm making now, right? I suppose if I took all the design off the front and just used the sizing and the shaping, that's a template, isn't it? And then you put your own pattern on the front. Not that I'm going to do something that on that scale again, I'm just like guessing. So I've got some yarn. I want, I want to learn to make a plain, simple jumper. I want to learn how to make a plain crew neck jump. I think it's a crew neck jumper, yeah? But I want to do it in a size that it's going to be manageable for me, that I'm not going to get bored after. I think like a baby or toddler, that'd be great. And I've got yarn for it, I'm pretty sure I have. And then that means I'll get the technique down. Once I have one pattern, that's plain, that's why I want plain. I'll knit one to practice with. And then, once I've got the back of it, I'm going to try and put a pattern on it and find a stitch out with a stitch book. i a stitch book. And then add that to it. And then I've got the old design then. Even though it's somebody else's shaping, does that count? I don't know. Right, let's go. Yeah, we're on our way. I've just dropped CJ off at college. So I thought I'd do um, a bit of a car vlog and I was thinking <laughs> well, it's funny to me anyway if a video log is a vlog is a car log a clog could be so I went to wash and block my mother-in-law's shawl I washed it I had washed it in the sink um, even though the label said uh, machine washable 30 degrees. I thought, oh, I, d I don't want to, I don't want it being battered in the machine and goodness knows what state it'll end up in. <clears throat> I'll just do it in the sink. So I did. And um, I didn't end up blocking it, I just laid it out flat because the way it washed and also the way it was washed, it's kind of opened the stitches out. Um, along the bottom part of it where all the double crochets are and it looks more lacy and open and in some ways I think oh that's beautiful now if I'd have just seen it for the very first time I'd think it was beautiful but because I'd seen it beforehand where it was more compact I'm like <gasps> was it meant to be like that oh no what have I done what have I done but then I looked at um, the V stitches what are created by the half double crochet back loops so you have the, the the ridges. Now, the actual V's themselves are perfect. Well, I think perfect. But between them, the half double crochets are more open. 
not as much open, not as open as the double crochets, but they're different to how they were. But seeing those V stitches consistent as to how I remember them before I washed it, it's fine. So it probably is fine, really. It's just me because I've seen it before and after. Whereas if somebody just seen it after, they think, "Oh, that's really nice," and it is. And I need to take some photos. Yeah, I was. Although I have been working a bit on my mum's shawl, I asked her, after showing her a picture of like my mother-in-law's, I said, the pe it peaks in the middle, so it actually looks like that. <laughs> um, so it gives you a little collar to turn over, but it is very little and it can be, it, it's up to you, shall I, I, can, I know what to do to keep it flat. Would you like me to flat it out? It's like stop increasing at a certain point on the half double crochets and then start decreasing a bit later crochets so it's flat just along that bit around the neck and she said yeah make it flat so I've done that um, actually on the decrease rows now both decrease the half double crochet and the double crochet um, so that's fine but I didn't really get much crochet done during the week because Wednesday I spent some really necessary time in the guest bedroom tidying it up of my stuff because I just kind of spread out and then on Friday I spent the morning tidying my bedside cabinet because it really needed to do it. Well I can't say I'm very happy with one of the radio presenters this morning. Um, it's Heart Radio and there's three morning presenters called Ed, Troy and Paulina and they're brilliant normally. Oh they're trying to do this thing Break America, well I'm going to make them known to America now especially Paulina. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they do these random phone calls to America and saying, Hi, it's Ed Troy Paulina from Heart Radio. Do you know who we are? Or something like this. They change what they say every time. They're like, people go on. They're saying, No, I've no idea who you are. Sorry. Or some people just like don't say anything and hang up. And now I don't know if they're calling businesses or if they're calling private numbers, but no, they have not succeeded. Nobody said, has said so far, oh yes, I know who you are. I listen to you on so internet radio, blah de blah de blah. Nobody has ever said that, but I think I'm going to make them famous now. Especially, especially Paulina, and especially in the world of crochet. Because, what was I talking about this morning? Oh, wearing something new today. What, what new things are you wearing today? You're wearing anything new. Was it that? Well, she said something like, Oh, it was Ed or Troy said somebody's wearing a, cro a crotchet and tie, and she went, "It's crocheted, crocheted." Oh, I thought it was crotchet. I was going to ask what that was, and he said, "What? What's crochet?" And she said, "So listen to this. It's like knitting." And she said, "But you don't use two needles. You use just one." No, you don't use a needle at all. You use a hook. And she then she said it was boring. No, she said it was boring first. No, it's not boring. Right, so, Paulina, you have incurred my displeasure, and I have just made you known to America now. So, if Ed Troy and Paulina call up from Heart Radio, Paulina's the one who said crochet was boring, you use one needle, and it's like Litty. Right, so now you know. So, if somebody phones you up, do you know us? We'll say, well, definitely know Paulina, and we know how she feels about crochet. No, they're brilliant, really. They're dead funny. I've, I've arrived home, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, go in and wash up. Okay, right. I'll uh, see you another time. Take care. Bye bye.